Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be addictions come from a failure to feel. Well, I've got an email here from a guy who says he's been – when he was in high school, he said he did the things that, that I teach in my book and my videos pretty much intuitively and instinctively. And he was very successful with women in high school or so he says. But now he's in his fourth year of college and at some point he says he became addicted to smoke and weed and watching porn all the time. And that had a negative effect on his sex life. He had a difficult time staying hard and he became really insecure about his ability to satisfy women. I mean you think about it. You're watching a porno and you see this dude that's got an elephant sized cock and he's just railing away at a woman and it's like – and they're just obviously in ecstasy and having this great, unbelievable experience with them. And if you're just an average, regular dude, especially when you're young and you're watching this kind of stuff all the time, you, you can't help but feel that you're somehow not going to measure up. So I have a quote that I wrote on this particular topic because he says he's now he's gone eight days without any weed or any porn. And he's just really in a bad, fearful state. And he's like, what, what should I be focusing on so I can get my mojo back? and start dating because he's like smoking weed and porn just completely destroyed his confidence he says. And I would say it's not so much that it destroyed his confidence is that he made choices as to what he was experiencing in life meant to him. And so it's in interesting that – remember, I've said this so many times in my videos, people will act consistently with who they view themselves to be, whether that view is accurate or not. And as you mean, we make up all kinds of bullshit stories to tell ourselves about why things are the certain way in our lives. And you can see that here. He's just created this story because of porn and marijuana as, oh, this is why I'm not successful with women. So let me go through this quote that I wrote and then I'll go through his email. And the quote says, the root cause of addiction to anything in life is a direct result of our desire to avoid feeling things that are unpleasant or uncomfortable. Consuming drugs, alcohol, junk food, excessive exercise, sex, watching TV, porn, etc. changes our state and what we are feeling. If something does not feel good, we often will do something to change our state which makes us feel better. Obviously, in most cases, temporarily. However, what you resist in life will persist, but what you look at and experience will disappear and dissolve. It's always a good rule of thumb to try and be healthy and balanced at least 80% of the time. Anything that is done to excess will create disease and imbalances in our lives. It's nice to unplug every now and then, but unplugging on a daily basis to avoid feeling something is not healthy and has a negative effect on the quality of our lives. We must feel, be authentically present with, and fully experience our pain, icky feelings, and emotions without judgment to heal, dissolve, and transcend them. You want to know a neat experiment? Unplug. If you watch a lot of TV, unplug your fucking TV for 30 days and don't watch any TV for 30 days. And try that. And especially if you're somebody that comes home from work every day and then turns on the boob tube and watches your favorite – you watch your favorite sitcom or whatever. What, think about how much time people spend watching TV. The average person, they work, they come home, they turn their TV on and they check out. Why? Because they're not happy with their job. They're not happy with who they're in relationship with. They're not happy with their family situation, whatever it happens to be. Because it's like you get all caught up in this fantasy world or it's or porn or drinking alcohol excessively or smoking weed every single day instead of just every once in a while. Everything in moderation and it's like we think about like being healthy. If you figure an average month has about 30 days in it. So if you're going to be healthy 80% of the time, that means 20% of the time, smoke your weed, drink your beer, eat your fucking chocolate cake, your junk food, your Ben and Jerry's ice cream, eat a whole fucking gallon of it if you want or whatever. But so that means on a monthly basis, that's about six days a month. That you can just eat whatever you want and just fuck off and do whatever. But the rest of the time, you should be healthy, eating healthy foods. Like for me personally, I love carrot cake and I love brownies. There's, I love M&Ms. I love Reese's peanut butter cups. I love Twizzlers. I love, all, I love Ben and Jerry's. I mean, I love drinking beer. You know, but I'll have if I'm gonna drink beer, I have two, maybe three. Like even today, 
it's like after I get done with these videos, um, my videos are done for the work week. And I'm going to go to lunch. I'm going to have a one of my favorite dishes restaurant that's not too far from where I live. They've got this great grilled shrimp platter and it's over this really great salad. It's got kind of this spicy ranch dressing and they've got corn with it. It's fantastic. And I'm going to have about two beers. It's just eating grilled shrimp and having a nice frothy ice cold beer. Just the bubbles and the suds in your mouth. It's just – it's amazing. But after two of beers, I'm like – I feel – I mean that's going to give me a buzz because I, I mean I, I have beers maybe once a week. But most of the time I only have drink two to three times a month. And like once a week I might have a piece of cake or a brownie. I love that stuff and I would eat it every day but I feel like shit if I eat it every day. And even when I do eat that stuff, I'm sucking down a green vegetable juice with it because it makes me – it balances out the metabolic acids in there. So let's go through his email. He says, hey, Coach Corey, I'm a university senior. And to make a long story short, in high school, I intuitively exhibited the traits you talk about in your videos. I was driven, passionate, and confident in life. And as a result, I hooked up with a lot of girls. I knew instinctively, so you've had success in the past with women. It's just like riding a bike. You did not forget that. But obviously if you're smoking weed all the time and you're watching porn, you're literally avoiding interacting with women totally. I mean you're just like – you're checked out. Whether you're a fear – you're afraid of rejection or whatever it happens to be. And the thing with like smoking weed every day or any kind of drug is that you experience only the high emotions, only the really good vibrations if you will, the irie vibrations. But life is not all fucking sunshine in roses. Sometimes life sucks ass. Sometimes you'll wake up and you just feel like hell. You feel depressed. You feel sad. You're worrying about something, whatever it happens to be. And if you're smoking weed all the time and drinking, you're avoiding feeling those feelings, those icky, unpleasant feelings. Kids experience their emotions authentically, but us as adults, we don't. And these are the kinds of things that happen, especially you've been taught all your life. It's it's not good to feel sad, if, especially if you're a guy. It's not it's not good to feel lonely. It's not good to feel depressed. It's not good to feel anger. You only should experience great emotions. Well, that's just not the human experience. You've got to experience all of them because what you resist will persist. And so if you're – I mean you think about it like say you, you smoke weed or you drink or you're popping pills like Xanax or any of these other type of drugs that are out there, Vicodin. I mean any of that kind of stuff, it, that stuff is – it's fine on an infrequent basis but if you're doing it every day, what happens is those icky feelings or something happens like you don't deal with it and then it gets stored as muscle tension in your nervous system. And if you're, and if you're getting inebriated every single day and you're really only experiencing the good feelings when you're doing that, what happens is over the days, weeks and months, if you're doing that shit every single day, it's like that stuff – it's like not taking out the trash if you will. It's you – know, <laughs> I had a roommate of mine one time and it's like he was so fucking lazy. He did not take the garbage to the dumpster. I remember one time there were like 10 fucking bags of garbage in his house just because he didn't take it to the, the shit to the fucking dumpster. There were flies and other things in there. I was like, I was like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? It's like you're collecting all these fucking bags in here. And he was just too lazy because you know you had to throw the shit in the back of your car and take it around to the dumpster in the apartment complex. He was just too lazy to do it. Sometimes he would let his housekeeper do that. You know, she's making two or three fucking trips to the dump because he's too lazy to take out the fucking garbage. But that's kind of like what ha- metaphorically what happens to us. If you're if you're using getting inebriated every single day, it's like the garbage piles up and you never deal with it. Because it doesn't feel good and then you stop smoking or you stop drinking or you stop whatever you were doing to inebriate yourself and then you have, and then it could be overwhelming, all this crappy, shitty feelings that you feel and you may spend two or three days just laying in bed feeling sorry for yourself and hating your life and feeling depressed. You got to feel those emotions. Again, if you watch children, kids get upset, they get angry, they get grumpy, they get grouchy, they take a nap. They're happy, they run around, they smile on, they fall, they stumble, they cry and they experience it. But as adults, it's like what you're – this guy's basically been doing by smoking weed all the time and watching porn is he's avoiding life. And so all the things that don't feel good in his life because again, 
addicted addiction to anything. Anybody that's that that works with people that get a, get addictive or they do therapy with people like that, I'll tell you the root cause of it is a failure to feel. And so all that stuff builds up with inside you, and then you don't feel it. And so like when you stop doing that stuff, that's, that's one of the reasons why not only is your body detoxing the chemicals that you've ingested in your body, but you're also detoxing the emotions that are in your body. And you've got to be present with them. Even if you have to spend all day in bed crying and feeling sad for yourself and yelling and screaming with your, the, your pillow over your face, you've got to feel it to heal it. And then you might spend a whole day in bed feeling that or maybe two days and then you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I feel great. I feel amazing. And it's just all, – all it is really is energy. It's energy that was not experienced. And when the energy doesn't get experienced, it gets stored in muscle tension in, in your nervous system. And that's really the, the root issue of what's going on here with this guy. He says, I knew instinctively not to care about what women thought of me and I derived my confidence from my belief in myself. However, I began to become addicted to internet porn and marijuana which ruined me. You're not ruined, dude. There's nothing fucking wrong with you. You simply have just made some choices in your belief system and the story that you tell yourself. This is the excuse. So you're basically saying – because of internet porn and marijuana, now I can't be successful with women anymore. So therefore, I'm going to keep smoking weed every single day and watching internet porn every single day and jerking off so much that it takes me an hour to blow my fucking wad because my dick has no sensitivity anymore. He says, the porn made me develop stupid fantasies of what I wanted from sex which caused me to not get fully hard erections during sex. Don't touch your dick for a few days, dude. Leave it alone. Any of you that are watching this that are men that are sexually active know that when you're having sex a lot, your dick loses its sensitivity and you can stay hard literally until your woman has two, three, four, five, six, seven orgasms. But if you're having sex maybe once a month and you're not choking the chicken at all, I mean literally you're like a teenager losing his virginity. You get halfway in and you blow your wad almost. So – I did a, an article several years ago called How Men Can Have Multiple Orgasms and so if you're not currently having sex with anyone but you're going out and you expect it to happen, one of the things that you can do is two, maybe three times a week choke the chicken and follow the exercise that I teach and how men can have multiple orgasms. So if you do go out with your buddies and you meet a girl and you go to have sex, you can have a great experience and she can have a great experience. Again, what's happening is your your body and your life is totally out of whack, totally out of balance. And so you got to get back to the way you were when you were in high school. He says, this killed my confidence and took away my drive with women because I didn't feel I could satisfy them. Again, this is a, this is a choice that you made mentally. This is part of the story that you told yourself. He says, marijuana made me lazy, stupider, and less motivated in my, in my life. Well, when it comes to smoking weed, there's, there's two different types. There's a type of weed that makes you eh, check out and become a zombie. And then there's the other kind that gives you the feelings of high. I forget the names of them. But that, you know, if you're smoking the kind that makes you tired and sleepy and want to veg out on the couch all the time, I'm like, yeah. And especially if you're smoking it every day. He says, I had a friend – at the time who was also very much like me and since I lost my alphaness, we drifted. So it sounds like he was successful and he continued being that way but you went down a different path with smoking weed and watching porn. And more than likely if you were smoking weed all the time, you weren't interacting with other human beings because you're sitting around the house being lazy but you still felt horny and so to fill in that gap, you started watching porn. And so you started satisfying yourself virtually instead of physically in person. He says, I'm now in my fourth year and I've barely hooked up with any girls in college. I'm still motivated to pursue my career and I'm trying hard every day to not give into the porn or marijuana. Well, again, if you're going to do stuff like that, I mean, there's just no, the only reason that somebody's looking at porn is that they're just not satisfied in their life. And obviously you can see you went be, from being successful to smoking weed and smoking weed made you want to check out and because you were smoking it every single day, all those icky feelings built up inside you 
and therefore you didn't feel comfortable interacting with women because you had all this crap. It's like you had all the garbage you hadn't taken out like my buddy that had like 10 bags of fucking garbage in his kitchen. That's basically what happened to you. You never took time to experience those icky feelings. But once you've experienced those icky feelings, they dissolve and they go away. And then you're going to feel comfortable interacting with women. And you already know how to do this. You're already successful with women. But what you need to do now is you need to focus on the crap that doesn't feel good. Maybe you should get in contact with a therapist or a psychologist or a counselor. I don't know what country you live in. And go talk to somebody professional about whatever it is. Maybe you got issues from childhood. I, I don't know. I'm not a, that's not what I do. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm a coach. My job is to help you achieve your outcomes that you want. But if taking the time to feel it, to heal it, like I talk about, and I've done many videos on this, where you, you're authentically present with your emotions just like a child is. And if that means you lay in bed all day feeling sorry and crying and screaming curse words into your pillow – I feel sad, I feel depressed, I feel lonely, I feel like a failure, I feel like I'm never going to meet another woman again. Whatever it happens to be, as long as you feel those feelings, experience them and express them to yourself. You don't need to be around anybody else to do that. And once you're present with it, and you may f- spend two or three hours feeling that way, and then you feel great the rest of the day, and then the next day you wake up and you feel shitty again. Whenever that happens, you've got to take time. I mean at least once or twice a week I have a day where I wake up or just in the middle of the afternoon. I'm going to have a great afternoon and then – or a great morning and then the afternoon I just start feeling like shit. And I think about it and I think, well, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? And I express those emotions and those feelings and it dissolves it and goes away. When I was younger, I avoided that stuff and all that got stored is muscle tension and network chiropractic analysis or NSA really helped me dissolve all of that stuff. So when, I, when an emotion happens now that's really unpleasant – I'm present with it in that moment. Therefore, the shit doesn't build up. I'm in essence taking out the trash metaphorically, if you will, in my own life. Kids do that. Kids feel their feelings, all the good, bad, and the ugly right away and they dissolve them and they're not consistently hijacked by them. He says, I've gone eight days without either so far. However, I don't know how to get things going again with women. That is total bullshit. This is the story that you tell yourself. Why? Because you're, a, you're fearful. Human beings have two f- primary fears. Fear that we're not enough. In other words, fear that we don't have what it takes or fear that we won't be loved and accepted by our friends, family, peer group or women that we want to like us. So you have to get out there and you have to start interacting with women. Maybe you got a lot of emotions you still haven't felt yet or dealt with, especially if you've been smoking every day and now you just went cold turkey it's gonna, it might take you two or three weeks of not smoking or doing anything before you get to the point where you feel – start to feel normal again and you start to – because if you're used to going around in the world where you're literally high every single fucking day, you're not used to interacting with people in a normal, balanced, sober way. And so take two or three weeks off or a month off from smoking weed or watching porn or any of that stuff. Focus on going to the gym. Focus on taking care of yourself. Focus on taking care of you and getting refocused and recentered. And when you feel those crappy feelings, be authentically present with them. If you're still not able to do that, then go talk to a therapist or a psychologist or a counselor, somebody that can help you work through those things. You know, it's like the same thing a vet experiences. A lot of guys that go over and experience really horrendous traumatic combat, they don't talk to anybody when they come back, and that stuff just a lot. It destroys them mentally and emotionally when they don't experience that stuff. That's why therapy can be very helpful if people aren't experiencing their negative emotions authentically. He says, even the one girl who used to be obsessed with me and would hook up with me is now starting to give me the cold shoulder. Well, you shouldn't be pursuing her. You need to read the book 10 to 15 times. So it sounds like this particular if, – if a girl's giving you the cold shoulder – you just simply need to say, hey, well, give me a call when you want to get together and you don't call or text her until you hear from her next. If you badger her and you constantly reach out to her, you can't expect to be successful. When a woman is losing interest and becoming bored, you have to back away. Otherwise, you're going to completely turn her off to the point where she loses all respect and interest in you. My question is, what are some of the things I can do to ensure that I don't give in to my addictions and how do I re-spark my love life from a position where I don't have anything going? 
Well, again, like I was saying, you, if you just have quit all this stuff cold turkey, it's, it's going to take you at least two, three weeks, maybe four weeks for that for you to detox emotionally and chemically. And once those emo, those icky emotions have been experienced and felt and dissolved, and once the chemicals are out of your body, then you're going to feel better. That's why working out, doing a lot of cardio, and eating really healthy alkaline-based diet, like I, you know, I've got a whole section on my website and on my YouTube channel that's dedicated to health. Eating those kinds of foods will help you detox quicker and feel better. And if you feel you have an upset stomach or you feel sick to your stomach, taking one teaspoon of baking soda dissolved in 10 ounces of water when you feel that way two, three times a day will help balance that out. That's what I would do from you for you. And also I watch the video improving your social skills. And just say, I'm not gonna ask anybody out. Just take little baby steps of just saying hello and making eye contact with women for the next couple of weeks while you're detoxing your body. So you can kind of get in the habit of of rekindling your social life, if you will. Again, the, the video improving your social skills is I think it's like twelve minutes long. It's on the home page of my YouTube channel. And just watch it. Go to the mall, and or just when you're walking around on campus, because there's, I mean, there's lots of beautiful single young women. You got a complete target-rich environment. You're in the best place you can be, dude. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't be smoking any weed, and don't be watching any porn at least for the next 30 days. Take care of you. Take care of your body. Get refocused on your studies. Go to the gym. Get a personal trainer. Get a nutritionist. Whatever you got to do. And take care of yourself. And when you do encounter a woman, make eye contact, smile, say hello. How's your day going? What are you up to? Tell me about you. But just say, hey, I'm not going to ask anybody out. And that takes all the pressure off of it. Your goal should just be to start being friendly with women and making eye contact with them while you're in the process of detoxing your body emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, and chemically, obviously, in this particular case. And once you really start feeling better in three to four weeks from now, when you really start to feel like normal again, then start taking steps a little further like I talk – the things I talk about in the book and also what I talk about in the video, improving your social skills. And all you have to do, if you've already been really successful with women in the past, once the chemicals are out of your body and that stuff no longer has a negative influence on you, that shit will come right back to you, dude. And especially with the knowledge that now you have in my book – also, with the experiences that you had in high school, you know, in a month or two, dude, you can have more women than you know what to fucking do with. And I mean, you're in your last year of college, dude. Take advantage of it because there's never going to be another time in your life where you're surrounded by that many beautiful single women who have similar goals and similar values. And now, so it's like, don't squander that opportunity. Even though the you know you may have been smoking weed and watching porn for the last three three and a half years. Of being in college doesn't mean you can't have a great rest of the year and have a really great experience. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.